I guarantee you won't buy a supposedly next-gen graphics card that gives you the performance of an RTX 3080 but at the cost of a similar power consumption. Next-gen means the product should be able to beat its predecessor on a lower price while being more power efficient. Now we already know a few things about AMD's next-gen RX 7000 series graphics cards. These graphics cards are going to use the RDNA 3 architecture that will enhance the performance of these GPUs unlike the ADA Lovelace from Nvidia. From numerous leaks and reports, we already know that the flagship RTX 4090 will be consuming 450 to 650 watts. In my opinion, increased power consumption with increased performance isn't a great thing to be proud of. However, the RDNA 3 architecture seems to work better than the ADA Lovelace in terms of power consumption. Graymon recently tweeted that he has some information and a few guesses on the upcoming RDNA 3 based AMD graphics cards. So take this information with a little bit of salt. The three already popular GPU chips, as we know, are the Navi 31, Navi 32, and the Navi 33. Navi 31 is going to take over the Navi 21 GPU, such as the RX 6900 XT. Although the Navi 33, which is the weakest in the Navi 30 GPUs, is rumored to be faster than the RX 6900 XT. While we will discuss about these rumored specs later, let's dive into some more tweets where we can see how much power the Navi 30 GPUs are going to consume. A user asked Graymon to comment about the power draw by the new graphics cards. Graymon replied 350 or 450 watts for the Navi 31, 250 watts for the Navi 32, and 180 watts for the Navi 33. Just as I mentioned earlier, the Navi 33 is going to beat the RX 6900 XT, and 6900 XT has a TDP of 300 watts. So giving 4K gaming performance at 120 watts power reduction is insane. Currently, the closest to this GPU in terms of power consumption is the RTX 3060 from NVIDIA and RX 6600 XT from AMD. However, Navi 33 will still be behind the RX 6900 XT in its memory configuration. Graymon suggests that it will come with 8GB of GDDR6 memory on a 128-bit memory bus, while the 6900 XT brings double the memory on 256-bit memory bus. Moreover, the 6900 XT will have double infinity cache than the Navi 33. Another surprising thing about Navi 33 is that it has only 4096 stream processors, which again makes the Navi 33 inferior to RX 6900 XT. However, Graymon argues that RDNA 3 architecture will do its job to surpass the RX 6900 XT despite Navi 33 being apparently slower on the paper. Due to having lower memory specs, it can also be argued if the Navi 33 will be great for 4K gaming as 4K resolution requires more and better VRAM. But I will be still satisfied to see if it does a great job at 1440p resolution. Now the only thing left is its price. I hope that it won't be priced at $1000 like the 6900 XT as it is supposedly the successor to the RX 6700 XT. A price tag of somewhere $500 to $600 will be much better. While it is still early to guess its price, as the RX 7000 series is not going to come before the late second quarter of 2022, better pricing will make it stand out from Nvidia graphics cards. I am not only excited to see if this comes to be true, but I am even more excited about AMD's Rembrandt APUs, which are going to feature the fastest integrated graphics. If you haven't watched the previous video, make sure you check it out. And subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated with regards to Navi 30 GPUs and other PC hardware as well. And I will be back with another interesting story soon.